Hey guys, so today we're going to update my power system a little bit. I'm not completely happy with the way it's set up. Um, so I'm going to move some power ports and I'm going to upgrade the battery. And I also get to show off this t-shirt that my son made for me. You know, he's got a nonprofit that uh, he does and he does screen printing. So uh, he made me a shirt, which is awesome. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to update that system today and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. First up, what I want to do is I want to upgrade this battery. This is a mini lithium ion phosphate battery. It actually worked great for my system, but what I want to do is I want to upgrade it to this one. This is also a red ODO group 24 lithium battery. It's not a mini, um, but it's not a full size either. So it's a little, it's still smaller than a normal full size uh, and slightly bigger than the mini. And we're going to compare that in a little bit. What else I want to do is I want to, uh, move these ports right here. I originally made them without thinking about my my kitchen drawer box uh, but and then I made these cuts to accommodate those ports and I really don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the ports to probably right here or I might move them right here. I haven't decided yet but first uh, I want to put in this battery and see how well it fits and I actually might even need to make a, a new um, I guess a border a case for everything uh, but we'll see how that goes first uh, let's take a look at this right, so let's go over why I want to swap out and upgrade the batteries uh, because this one one main thing that I like better about this battery is that there is a Bluetooth uh, battery monitor so uh, in my previous builds I had to do a battery monitor a physical battery monitor and, and which actually worked well uh, but you know you had to calibrate it and things like that so it was a little bit cumbersome to install but once it installed it was great but this uh, because there's an app that uh, you can monitor your battery level you don't have to do any of that installation so that's really good also in this camper I, I do want to put a microwave in it so this battery can handle a bigger current spike than the, the mini battery that I have there that mini doesn't handle the same type of current spike that this does and that's actually you know, important if you do want to do things like uh, you know microwaves and things like that so so that's nice and because they were doing some things for size they, they did have a few less features so the capacitive load on that is a little bit lower so what happens is um, there, there I have one inverter that actually doesn't work with that battery I, my other two inverters work fine and this one works fine but one inverter doesn't work and I think it has to do something with that capacitive load pre-charge on the BMS that it has so you know, it would just o overload right away um, but this should not have that problem at all and we'll test out that other inverter on this one just to make sure that's the case but anyways uh, let's compare the sizes of the two all right so let's take a look this is the mini size you can see it, it is smaller in terms of the depth that's significantly smaller height wise it's actually a little bit taller than this guy right here. And width wise, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. So, you know, this, like I mentioned, is a group 24. So it's not much bigger than this. That's going to be nice. Hopefully it'll fit inside my, um, my box well enough. I, I may need to make bigger walls um, because again, this, this is a, a thinner, you know, it's not as deep and this, I'm going to lay it on its side, just like I did this one. But we'll see how that goes. But you know, if everything works out, well, you know, this should be a, a significant upgrade in terms of power, not in terms of size. But you know, again, it's got the Bluetooth. And for for me in California, it doesn't matter too much because in one, I never camp in the cold. Uh, but it does have a upgraded BMS so that uh, it does have some cold temperature shut off for people that are in colder weather that really need that. Uh, I don't have that problem because I never camp when it's cold. All right, let's see how well this thing fits in there. Okay, so um, footprint wise, it, it's no problem, but the issue is the height. You can see, you know, my my uh, my enclosure will no longer close because it's just too high. So what I need to do is I need to make some modifications to bring my enclosure up, or or I could just um, prop it up a little bit and I'll show you what I mean by that you know because not, this enclosure is not drilled down 
I could actually lift it up pretty easily and just be like that. So I might just do, take the quick and easy route and just elevate the legs on this. And this should still come down fine. There should be enough room for my chair. So let's test that out. All right, let's make sure that the seats can still go down. And it's just on the edge. Let's see. All right. I actually have the microwave that I'm going to install in this car here already. All right, so let's take a look at this. See, you can see with that new battery, uh, it's not laying completely flat. So it looks like I'm going to have to do some modifications to this box uh, just to get this thing to lay flat. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. But uh, that's the reason why I got that mini battery in the first place, because I knew it, it was pretty much the flattest battery on the market that I could put in. Um, but now with this upgrade with the bigger, you know, with the battery monitor, I'm going to need to modify my box a little bit to get this thing to lay flat. So let's work on that. All right. So all I have to do is to bring up the battery just a little bit and now it'll fit uh, underneath and I can lay the seat flat as my bed again. So what I need to do is I need to put all the components in the back instead of the front. So that should be no problem at all. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to build a partition for uh, this battery so that it doesn't slide forward when you break or anything like that. Before it had this as the backstop so it wouldn't slide anywhere. But now I'm gonna need to build a partition for that on this side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these ports and we're gonna probably move them right here. Since I can't move them here because the battery's in that spot. So I cut these new partitions. Now I'm going to screw them all everything together, make it nice and tight. All right. So now that that frame is in, I can put it in, and now I can start to populate all the components. Okay. One one last thing before I put everything together is I have to put on the cover. Now the this battery sticks out over this uh, casing now, so I need to cut out a little notch for that battery. All right, so I cut the notch for the battery since it sits up a little bit higher. You can see it. Um, another thing is I need another hole right here because this hole is now covered by that side wall right there. So just for better ventilation, I'm gonna need another hole here. And uh, maybe I might do another hole here. All right, so I got that back on. There's the cover gonna go over the battery all right let's put everything back all right so before I put everything back let's uh, test out that battery remember I told you there was one inverter that had a hard time with this uh, this battery so let's take a look at it see if it still has a hard time of course now that I'm here testing it for you guys it'll probably work um, now remember I have my Resistor, this is 25 ohms, and uh, if you don't want your uh, unit to spark when you plug in an inverter, you might want to consider discharging the capacitors. Just give it a few seconds, and it should not spark. See? No spark. All right. Yep, see? It didn't work. It just overloaded. Didn't like it. So let's try it with the new battery. Okay, so this one has a bigger and better BMS, so it should be able to handle um, whatever spike this thing is calling for. Again, I'm gonna discharge it before I do the, the negative side. A few seconds. Okay, let's give it a shot. Just remember it. This battery um, comes deactivated, so you just have to start charging it for a little bit to activate it. So let's do that first before we do this test. All right, so let's test how much power this thing comes with. Only 3.2 3 volts, so let's charge that up for a while before we get, uh, get the test going. And the reason for that is that 
they want this thing to store and to transport with everything powered down that, that's why it doesn't come fully charged all right so while i'm charging that battery i got something else i can do my son is always telling me my builds are really nice but i need to put more effort into the finish the way they look so he says i need to paint more so while i'm waiting for the battery to charge might as well paint this all right i hope that's dry i'm a bit impatient but there it looks white Right, got those ports in. Not, I didn't have room to leave a sliver of wood here just because it was just so tight. So there's a gap, but I'll just have to live with that gap. Let's uh, get in the battery. Before we put the battery back in, let's test it with uh, this inverter that didn't work with the old battery. Okay, let's power this thing on. works with this battery it did not work with this smaller battery and that's because of the the bms on this one is more hardy so that's why i needed this newer battery so let's get that battery in there then all right that's not going anywhere Right, so you can see back here, there's a stopper right there that keeps it in place. So now I'm going to put all my chargers uh, into that spot. And we're going to hook up the inverter. We're going to hook up the DC power. So I'm keeping my old setup. These are these um, Bouge RB uh, solar chargers. Remember, I have two of them. One smaller one, 20 amp, and one bigger one, big, uh, 30 amp, to charge this battery. And the smaller amp is just to keep my car battery fresh. Uh, and if you don't know, I have uh, this 200 watt flexible uh, solar panel back here. It's the same company, Bouge RV. This 200 watt will take care of all the power I need. All right, so I got everything hooked up. So let's take a look at the wiring. Here's the wiring. There's the two chargers, and everything's connected to the batteries. The the inverter is coming back here, and I made that slot for the wires to tuck underneath. DC ports are hooked up. Let's test that out. 13.5 volts, perfect. And uh, my inverter is already on. It's got a full charge. And the solar charger is going to keep on topping off that battery. Remember, that, that charger doing the... the this battery and that charger doing the car battery. All right, nice and clean and my car seat can go back. One last thing to do is to get all my stuff back in. Toolkit, gloves, ratchet and straps. All right, that's how everything looks put back into my storage area. You can see I can still get to my power ports right down there, USB ports, whatever, and I have the DC ports if I just need DC. So now it looks nice and neat again. All right, one last thing to do is to uh, sync up my Bluetooth to the battery. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why I, I updated this battery is to get that Bluetooth battery monitor. So let's uh, sync it up. I'm going to use the phone that I'm recording on to sync it up so we're going to need to do the details offline and i'll give you a screenshot of it this is a screenshot of that battery monitor app you could see i'm at 67 percent and i didn't have to do any wiring to monitor the battery so that's perfect and hopefully that's the last thing i'm going to do to tinker with this power system you guys probably know i've tinkered it with, with it a few times but whenever i see something i could improve upon just a little bit i'm willing to go for it 
And plus, today, I was able to show off the shirt that my son made for me. So now, it's football and Miller time.